Thanks for tuning in to another Infinite Flight tutorial. In this video, I'll show you to fly the Embraer 175, a regional jet used around the world that boasts an impressive range and amazing flying characteristics. Today, we'll be providing service from Seattle to Boise for Alaska Airlines. The flight planning details are located to the right if you'd like to follow along. As we push and prepare for taxi, we'll start engine number one. Single engine taxi is common and you can expect the E-175 to roll on its own, even slightly accelerating if both engines are running. While taxiing, 90 degree turns should be done at or below 10 knots, while 20 to 30 knots is normal on the straightaways. Two minutes prior to departure, we'll start up engine number two, then shut down the APU. Today's departure will be using a flaps two configuration, the most common takeoff setting in the E-175. Flaps four may be used for short runway operations. As we align on the center line, I first advance the power to 40% before setting the takeoff power setting of 85% in one. In nearly all phases of flight, the E-175 should not exceed 90% N1. As we roll down the runway, I use rudder for directional control and gently rotate as we reach a rotation speed of 135 knots, initially pitching for 12 and a half to 15 degrees. With a positive rate, our gear is coming up and we track the center line across our first fix at or above 4,000 feet before turning. Reaching 1,000 feet above the airport elevation will reduce to a climb power setting typically between 83 and 85% N1, and we accelerate to 250 knots. Flaps 1 is set passing 185 knots and flaps up by 210 knots. As always, I highly recommend hand flying below 10,000 feet as you learn a new aircraft. At 10,000 feet, we'll again lower the nose and accelerate to our climb speed of 280 knots, which we'll pitch for all the way to cruise. Once reaching cruise, we'll accelerate to the desired cruise speed, which today is Mach 0.76. The E-175 cruise speed is between Mach 0.76 and 0.80, and the N-1 should never exceed 90%. Consider step climbing on long flights to preserve fuel and maximize efficiency. As we prepare our descent into Boise, we'll arm VNAV and descend at our current Mach speed of 0.76 until the indicated airspeed reaches 280, at which time we'll maintain 280 knots all the way down to 10,000 feet. Remember, reaching 10,000 feet, we also need to slow to 250 knots. We've reached the right downwind for the visual approach to runway 28 right at Boise. I've turned off the autopilot and have begun reducing my speed to set flaps for landing. Check out the reference card on the right for suggested flap extension speeds. I highly recommend tuning in the ILS while doing a visual just for the backup lateral and vertical guidance. Today's landing will use the standard flaps 5 configuration. Full is reserved for short field operations. We're now established on final, have made our CTAF call, and will maintain an approach speed of 133 slowing to 129 over the threshold. In a landing configuration, the E-175 should be about 2.5 degrees nose up on final. At the 50-foot callout, I'll slowly begin to round out, closing the throttle just prior to the 20-foot callout. Hold the nose at 5 degrees and let the aircraft settle onto the runway. Be sure you maintain directional control with your rudder and use reverse thrust, applying manual braking once you've reached 80 knots. As we slow to our cornering speed of 10 knots, we'll exit the runway, stow the spoilers and flaps, and make our way to the gate for another on-time arrival. For long taxis, you can also shut down the number two engine to save fuel. Now you're ready to fly the real thing. Leave a like or comment down below, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials, and I'll see you in the next one.